All right, welcome to the stream today. We're going to cover topic markers, subject markers, and object markers. In the summary, there are tons and tons of details about all of these that you could go learning. Like, oh, this one isn't used with this verb, and oh, this is, you know, in this situation, it sounds a little bit awkward. We're not going to go into that. That's not important that you know that in order to have a Korean conversation. In casual speech, all three of these particles can be removed. There is still the meaning of these particles in the sentence, they simply do not say them. I'll give you a quick example. So we have the object marker. 밥을 먹어요. Just means I eat pop. I eat a meal or I eat rice. Koreans will often just remove the object marker. So they'll just say 밥 먹어요. But regardless of whether a Korean says 밥을 먹어요 or 밥 먹어요, it has the exact same meaning. So often these things get left on the side of the road and a learner looks at that sentence and they see Korean doesn't need these particles. When in reality, it's simply Korean speaking much more casually and much more quickly and these tend to get dropped. But you should use these until you are already very good at speaking Korean because you'll understand where it feels natural to drop them and where it doesn't feel natural to drop them. You can drop these three particles whenever the meaning is not vague. We're gonna go first into the object marker. The object marker marks the object. In an English sentence, you might have a sentence like this. I like cheese. Or let's do another one. He reads a book. Any time that you have an action verb, any verb that does anything. For example, like, read. Many action verbs can do something to something. So for example, you have like. You can like cheese. You can like Korea. You can like K-pop. Or you have read. You can read the newspaper. You can do things to other things. If the action verb can affect something, whatever that verb is doing something to, this noun, this thing, is considered to be an object. Like is a verb and cheese is an object. That is what the object marker is for Korean. In Korean, we have to mark that. So you mark it with the object marker. And what that is, is you add uh after a consonant and you add le after a vowel. Cheese 좋아해요. So you have to mark this. You have to say, well, what is it that I like? Well, I like cheese. Cheese le 좋아해요. So that tells the listener when you're speaking, blah, 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 blah. Cheese le they hear, oh, cheese is going to have something done to it because I heard this marker. I know that something is going to happen to cheese. Maybe you're gonna kick it. Maybe you're gonna eat it. Maybe you dislike it. As soon as the Korean hears this, they're going to know that this is being used as an object. Why that's important. So someone go barges in, they're like, hey, where's my cheese? Who stole my cheese, right? And you're like, uh, 저는 I, uh, 저 cheese를, uh. And you don't say what happened. They hear cheese they hear, uh oh, you did something to the cheese. And then they would start thinking, threw it away, probably ate it because this object marker marks that now this is an object of a verb. So you might say, I have a hat. The object marker, again, is only used when you have a action verb. So here we have an action verb, ita, to exist, right? Existing is doing something. So people might think, oh, well then I can use an object marker with it because it's doing something. But is it doing anything to something? Is it exist doing something to something? Are you existing a hat or does a hat just exist? Itta only means to exist. It does not literally mean to have. That's just how it's used, but that's not what it actually means. So if you say, what you're literally saying is, as for me or for me, a hat exists. There's exceptions. There are some verbs that have to do with communicating. For example, malhada to speak or to talk. Chonahada to call, and 물어보다, to ask. These are not done with the object marker, even though it seems like they would be. They don't say to call someone, they say to call to someone. If you're using any of these verbs for communication, they say to. I will call to you later tonight. I will tell you. I will tell it to you. I will ask to him. You can use ege or ante, which means to, to mark the person. More common one of these is ante. For example, 친구한테 말해 주세요. Please tell to your friend. Please tell your friend. So again, anything that has to do with communication, use to and not the object marker. Common contraction. So the object marker is not always written as er or er. If you're using kot with er, this just becomes kol. Choder is also sometimes written as chol. Nader for me, nal, and no, nor. So you've probably seen love songs, right? No, or something like that. Topic marker. After a consonant, you'll add un, and after a vowel, you'll add none. Think of it like this. As for, or when it comes to. 
If you just want a way to translate it, this is pretty close to actually how it functions in Korean. In Korean, when you want to talk about something, right, you have to tell people what in your sentence is the topic. It's called the topic marker for a reason. Like say you meet with your friend and you're talking about, oh, did you see that new Avengers movie, right? Oh yeah, I saw the Avengers movie. How was it? It was really good. But in Korean, there are no pronouns. It's assumed. You would just say, 정말 재밌었어요. It was really good or it was really fun. In English, we have that word it to tell us what we're talking about. Korean, you don't need that. In Korean, they know what the topic is of, of a conversation at all times. So it's, that's why it's not necessary to say any of this extra stuff. You don't have to say, oh, 그것이, that is really fun. It's unnecessary and sounds repetitive because in Korean, they know the topic because it has been marked in the sentence with the topic marker. So I'll say that again. In Korean, they mark the topic of a sentence or a conversation. So when you use a topic marker, it tells the other person, this is the topic of what I'm going to talk about. This might be one sentence. It might be a paragraph. Here's Chosu, and he's talking with Yongi. Imagine everyone is holding together, whoever's talking, is holding a sign. What is written on the sign is the topic of what you're talking about. This topic would have first been introduced with the topic marker. Anytime you use a topic marker, imagine that you're changing what's written on the board that everyone's holding. And that's the topic. So you have a sentence, you start it with 저는. So you say 저는 치즈를 먹어요. I eat cheese. The topic that you were talking about is 저, me. The topic of what both people are talking about has now become tall. Without using another topic marker, anything that anyone says is going to be about Chersu. Chersu could say, oh, 저는 김치를 좋아해요. I like kimchi. Youngie 씨는, so now we're talking about Youngie. K-pop 좋아해요? Do you like K-pop? Youngie's talking about herself now, blah, 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 blah. And Chersu can say, oh, 아파트가 있어요? Do you have an apartment? I, I know these are really, this would be the most awkward, like, oblivion NPC conversation ever. But I'm trying to give you an example of, you can talk about whatever you want, and when you use the topic marker, it changes what you guys are actually talking about. That you don't need to keep saying 저는, 저는, 저는 once you've said it once. So the topic marker tells the other person or people that you're talking with, let's talk about this now. Which is why it's a really good translation to just think of it as meaning as for. Whenever you say as for in English, it sounds like you're really changing what you're talking about. Saying 저는, as for fish, 고등어가 최고죠. 고등어 is the best. So when you say 생선은, now let's talk about fish. It doesn't have to necessarily be fish is going to do something. It's just as for fish, when it comes to fish, mackerel is the best. First of all, you'll see it used often, general statements. A statement is just a sentence that's not a question. If you want to make a statement about something, right? You say, oh wow, um, Billy는 똑똑해요. Billy is smart. You know, in general, you know, Billy, he's smart. 사자는 귀여워요. You know, lions, they're, those guys, they're all cute. Lions are so cute. A general statement. You just want to say something. Topic marker works really great. Another common usage of the topic marker is to show contrast between two topics, between two things that you might be talking about. 저는 김치를 좋아해요. So now we have me on the sign. When it comes to me, I like kimchi. But what if we do this? And then you say 김치는 싫어해요. 김치는 is saying when it comes to kimchi. Or as for kimchi, or hey, let's let's talk about kimchi now, okay? Shiroheo, I dislike it. So you can show contrast by using this topic marker to mark something that normally wouldn't be marked. And then there's some common contractions. Kot plus un often becomes kon cho nen often will become chon nanen probably see nan nonen will become non. These are common contractions kon chon nan non. Let's go to the subject marker e after a consonant and ka after a vowel. What this does is much simpler than the topic marker. In Korean, a subject is anything that, or anyone, or who or what does something, and then who or what is something. In Korean, they have action verbs and descriptive verbs. Any who or what that does something, or who or what is something, so whether you use an action verb or a descriptive verb, so we could say charsu goes, or charsu is smart. Whatever that is, is the subject of the verb. So charsu is the subject of the descriptive verb tuktukada. Charsu is smart. Charsu is the subject also of kada. Charsu is going. People seem to get this confused with the topic marker because they might think I would already say like charsu nun kada. Like as for charsu, right? Now we're talking about charsu, now he goes. Or now we're talking about charsu, well he's smart, right? That's normally how you can do it. This is not the conversation topic. This is not what you're talking about with the other person. This is only to mark the subject of an action verb or a descriptive verb.
That's the main difference between the subject marker and the topic marker. The subject marker, it does not tell you what you guys are talking about. It doesn't start a new sentence with contrast. All it does, it says what the subject is of a verb. And every single verb that has someone doing it or someone being a certain way can have a subject. So you can have multiple subject markers in the same sentence if you have multiple verbs, but only one per verb. So you could be talking about like, oh, well, as for me, I like going to the movies. Oh, but that album, let's use the subject marker here, E, because it ends in a consonant, que album E, enjoyo. That album is not good. You did not change the topic of what you're talking about. You are still talking about yourself because all the subject marker does is say, it says, this is the subject of the verb that's going to come after it. Just like the object marker, all it does is says, this is the object of the verb that's going to come after it. E album e? Okay, now we're gonna say something about the album, just like the object marker. Now we're gonna say something that happens to it. But our conversation is still about the same thing. The topic has not changed. So you can have the sentence. So we're talking about Charsu right now. Charsu ga manden keikunen. We're already talking about Charsu, and I don't wanna change the topic. I don't wanna talk about the cake. I just wanna say the cake was gross. Keiku ga ma opsoyo is not delicious. Charsu ga manden. So now the conversation topic is still whatever you had it as, or maybe you want to talk about it a little bit. Now the topic is cake, specifically cake. So if you do nun, now you've set the new topic. So now we're going to talk about the cake. But both of these are perfectly natural ways to say the sentence. It's just slightly different meaning. Quoting is another one. So you said chonen. As for me, 철수가 했다 고 말했어요. So as for me, I said that 철수 did it. 철수 is not the topic. 철수 is simply to mark who did the verb. That's all the subject marker does. All it does is mark who or what is doing or is the verb. If you were to say 저는 철수는 똑똑하다고 말았어요, it would sound awkward. Grammatically, you could do that. Often, whenever you have these sort of nested sentences with two sentences, the first part, will be marked with nun. And the inside part will be marked with the subject marker. We're done with the lesson today. We actually finished on time. I'm really impressed. 저는 미국 사람입니다. And the sentence, 제가 미국 사람입니다. Think about this. Which one of these would be correct? In what situations would one be better? Think about this for a little bit. Um, if you have any thoughts about that, feel free to write them in the chat. 